Hey everybody, welcome to the Ron Partee Show for this week. My guest is amazing. It's Kona Neutron from Kona Neutron's Protonic Reversal and Kona Neutron and Secret Friends and the upcoming album Household Gods. We talk about all that stuff, his appearance at Virtual Blank with It's going to be coming up and he's going to be performing a song. Uh, he also performed another song that is exclusively over at ronhasawebsite.com, so don't forget to head over there and do all of that stuff. Um, it's a great chat. Church isn't here this week. Um, I went to his office. And there was a sign that said, Gone Ash Ramen. So I guess he went to an ashram and there was a note um, that said something to the effect of he'd be back when Ra, the sun god, was in the seventh house. of I don't know any of that stuff, so I don't know what's going on there. But he'll be back next week, I promise, uh, if I have to hunt him down in the Appalachians. Or wherever people go for that stuff myself. Because I'll, I'll do it. I don't care. What do I what do I have to lose in the hills? Um, but yeah, so this has been... Uh, this show's been a hell of a ride. Hell of a ride. And I, I owe it all to all of you. And uh, I thank you so much for watching. Uh, we're going to keep doing the show. We're actually setting up a second show uh, to kind of help musicians in the current climate going forward to get their name out there more especially now that they can't tour and perform for new people so we're working on that that'll be announced soon i'll be making that announcement uh also um head over to ron to see the performance by conan there's the merch store uh patreon all sorts of cool stuff get yourself a ron Perti show shirt uh share it with the world Say, world, look at me. I'm wearing a basket case shirt that has a stain on it. So it's not exactly a, a good thing. But neither here nor there. So uh, just head over there and uh, there's all sorts of back st backlogs and stuff. And uh, last week's episode with Bill Kopecky. Uh, I'm sorry, William Kopecky are, uh, is up there as well. So be sure to check all of that fun stuff out. Uh, and don't forget to check out Virtual Blank Fest, May 16th, um, at uh, youtube.com forward slash real Ron Perti. We're going to have an amazing lineup. All the proceeds are going to the homeless shelters in the area. Uh, William Elliott Whitmore is going to be playing. Uh, Tim Midyet from Silkworm is going to be there. Conan will be there. Dave Arcari. Um, Ken Rowell, who is the creator of the original Blank Fest in New York. Uh, his wife, Miss Evan Sotomayor. Uh, Annalise Curtin, Eric Kruger from Sunday Flood. It's going to be a great show. It's going to be fantastic. And uh, you can stop by. You don't have to pay to watch, but it is encouraged to donate because it's also there for people who can't donate, for people who are having a, just a rough time. This is a nice escape. You can chat with your friends. You can watch the show. It's going to be fantastic. So without all of that stuff... Uh, I want to thank you guys for watching, and we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back with Conan Neutron. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, this week on the program, we have an amazing guest, and he's going to be performing, too, but don't hold that against him. Ladies and gentlemen, a good friend of mine and soon-to-be of yours, Mr. Conan Neutron of Kona Neutron and the Secret Friends. Let's bring him up here so we can see him on the screen with everybody. Hi, buddy. How you doing? Well, hello. I haven't seen you since a birthday party, uh, like, set 20, 48 hours ago. Yeah, I was going to say, it's in our personal timelines, it's not been that long. No, it has not been that long. No. Especially in the current <laughs> climate, everything that's going on, uh, hanging out on Zoom is like hanging out at the bar getting drunk. Absolutely. Well, kind of. It's almost exactly the same thing, except for completely different. Except for nobody knows whether or not you're wearing pants. <laughs> right, exactly. So the, a, some of the people it's, it's on that Zoom... It's a statute of limitation. It's good. Yeah, yeah, hey, some of those people fine. on that Zoom call, I was questionable about their pants situation. Mainly <laughs> my own, but... It is what you it could is. do a pants inspection, but that's a that's a, that's a totally different kind of a Zoom call. Well, it would be still be a fun Zoom call, I think. I mean, I suppose it depends on who's on it. I suppose. I mean, <laughs> JJ showed up after you left, and it was. I, I'm not exactly sure I would have asked him to take his pants off. I love the guy, but please don't take your pants off, JJ. 
Please. Yeah, it wouldn't necessarily be something where that'd be the first thing you would want. Like, excuse me, sir, before you enter the Zoom call, we're going to need you to drop trow or pull trow up. <laughs> one or the other. There's no in-between. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so uh, we got a lot of stuff to cover and a little bit of time to do it in, so let's get right down to it. Household gods. Yeah, let's stop talking about pants, yes. please. <laughs> it's an all-pants party. No, household gods. Uh, yes. You sent this to me a few days ago, and holy crap, I was blown away. Uh, and you recorded it at the legendary uh, Rancho de Luno. Luna? R- Rancho de la Luna. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. I can't, I can't speak. Um, I'm high on antibiotics, and it's not from that trip to the seaside. Um, hey yeah, A lot of legendary people have recorded there. I know the Foo Fighters did an episode of Sonic Highways there. They did. Uh, um, Josh Homey from uh, Queens of the Stone Age, PJ Harvey, uh, Mark Lanigan has done a lot of stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. It's just an iconic studio, um, and but it looks like a grandmother's home. Yeah, it's not when you think of a studio and you think of all the things that make a studio a studio. Rancho de la Luna kind of does everything wrong, uh, but yeah, it turns out so right. So yeah, iconic Caius Records there, the post pop depression Iggy Pop record. Uh, uh, Desert it's, sessions. Yeah, absolutely. There's there's so many all the Desert Sessions. Yeah, uh, except for I think one of, one of them, but. It's a place that it forces you into a creative mindset because of the location. Like it's in Joshua Tree, so there's just literally not that much around, and your and your off time, you're kind of looking into this like you know beautiful like scenic vista that's just sort of very tranquil and and um, awe inspiring, and it forces you into an interesting headspace. Uh, Dave Ketching, who runs it, is a fantastic dude. Um, he plays, well, until recently, played in Eagles of Death Metal. He played in early Queens of the Stone Age, uh, Earthlings. Great player. Great beard as well. Uh, great. <laughs> Just great all around. I had him as a guest on my show, Conan New Transport Tonic Reversal. And it was a really good time. We just kind of kept in touch. And I happened to be going down to... Los Angeles for some uh, Kona Neutra on the Secret Friends record. And since there was some extra time in there, it just so happened to work out that we were able to put together this really awesome thing, which is definitely something that we walked into with no expectations. There were no songs. Like we wrote all the songs there. And like as you were recording them? Yeah, basically we would like write, write the song like the night before or the morning of and go into the studio and track them. And usually like what you hear is, you know, maybe the first or second take or something along those lines. Of course, the key to that is everyone else, everyone that uh, was in the recording session has made a million records themselves. Right. And really knows what they're doing and are wildly creative and interesting. Uh, so, and of course, I guess we haven't mentioned Dave Paho from Slint, Swan. I was going to get to who's on the record. Yes. Yeah, 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 as all that. I mean, he's just uh, a legend. Um, and then Vern Rumsey from Unwound, one of my favorite bands of all time. And then Lauren K. Newman, Palo Verde, LK Edman, uh, Lonesome Traveler, etc. And so, yeah, we all got together. We never played a note of music before, before we got into the room. And uh, with each other, I should say. I was going to say, wow, uh, that is a g- steep learning curve. Yeah. <laughs> well, but even though, so, and the idea... From my perspective, and I, I and you would need to speak to David or Vern for for their perspective. But from my perspective, the Kona Neutron, the Secret Friends record that we made is a concept record about mental health and depression, and it was very difficult to write. And it took me, it took longer than most of the Kona Neutron, the Secret Friends stuff does. And one of the reasons why is because of the subject matter. Right. And I was just really in my head about a lot of it, uh, literally, like in my in my head about a lot of it. But it, it, for me, it was something where this opportunity arose to do something cool. And it was actually very good for me. And I think it made for it, just for my own art, it made for a better record myself because it allowed me to kind of remember that. I mean, not that it's like, oh, boo-hoo, clocking in at the Melvin studio to go make another record for Toshi. But it's, it definitely made me think differently about everything and kind of did like a head check, like a reset, right. you know, for whatever. So not only we make an, an amazing, interesting, weird AF record for Household Gods, but I think it helped inform me and that Secret Friends record, which is not out yet. 
to make a better record that way too. And and I mean, not to put too fine a point on it, I guess I'm bearing the lead. You know, Unwound's one of the reasons I play music. Slint's like one of my favorite bands. Like, I'm, you know, trading guitar licks with like someone that I used to listen to <laughs> when I was 17 years old. You know, and uh, it's wild. It's 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 it's. it's I mean, it was it was honestly super cool and it was an incredible experience and then we made a bunch of different types of songs there were no expectations towards any of them i mean we didn't even know if like you know we could put together something and just a horrifying racket that <laughs> is tuneless with no songs involved uh, but we came out with something really cool and really interesting it doesn't it sounds a little bit like everything that people have done and a little bit nothing like it. Like it's it's very unique and it's it's I mean it's everything I hoped it would be and definitely none of the fears I had worked out. But yeah, we were sitting there at the same table that like Iggy and Josh were hanging out at, you know, frantically working on stuff like the night before. That's not <laughs> is, is there an aura in that studio at all? Or? Totally. Well, it has a few it it So it's a small place. It, it's not big, it's it's your grandma's house. Yeah, and and there's a lot of uh, tchotchkes and yep. decorations and things along those lines, and there's just guitars everywhere. There's pedals. There's awesome organs. It's just it's so, and and Dave's like just yeah, whatever you want, just pick it up. Yeah, you know, don't even bother asking. Just pick it up, start playing. Well, he's got cool, kind, of so. a, a kind of an eclectic collection of instruments too, doesn't he? He does. Yeah, and if you see the only time I've seen it documented is that Foo Fighters thing, but uh, there's a, he there's packs a, tour, a lot of stuff. There's a tour um that he gave on youtube oh for uh, i think it's like for earthquaker i think like something like that Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah that was pretty pretty interesting um now when it comes to this dave's just the coolest dude dave's the fucking he, he makes like it, it so easy he yeah yeah like it. and that used and i've been in the studio and people have recorded stuff and if, if the person who's like producing it is a dick it's gonna affect right. the record you know, absolutely. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But uh, now this record doesn't come without its uh, sorrow tales. Um, if, I mean, I'm not I'm bearing the lead, I guess. But um, could you could you tell us what happened and why the record is dedicated to her? Sure. OK, so we finished the record and the record's rad. We're all very like kind of <coughs> stoked on what we did and we're very happy with the results. But. You know, I'm I'm recording my own record immediately afterwards. Uh, I've got a tour that's happening. Vern's touring. Like uh, Dave uh, did a Pop M tour with Sun. Uh, everyone's got like their own things that they do that, that are aside from this. So it languished for a bit. Uh, just no real action happening on it. To, this was to like January it, but... of 2019. You recorded this. Right, yeah, and so then I tracked some other bits I needed to that we didn't get a chance to get to that you know, either I developed later or we just ran out of time. Um, and everyone kind of did the same, and it was sort of gradually coming together. But it was just it was slow poking, and it's a way that how I'm used to operating with Conan Neutron, the Secret Friends, especially. Uh, I don't, I don't dilly dally. Right. Like, it's very much like it's, it's, there's, <laughs> it'll be done by this time. Like, it's, it's this, it's this. And there's, a, there's very much, there's a method to it. We work very quickly. Mm -hmm. I sometimes forget that that's not how every band operates, especially something where this wasn't my deal. Like, I was 25% of a bigger hole. So, anyway, I'm establishing all this to let you know that it was slow going for the record to be completed. And then wh what I'll tell you is that. Lauren K. Newman, a.k.a. LKN, had health issues. Mm -hmm. She had advanced Crohn's disease, and she confided to me, because we became closer friends after recording it, uh, that it was actually worse than she let on, but she really didn't want to be seen as a musician with a disability. That was very important to her. She didn't want that asterisk next to her, because she busted her ass. Amazing guitar player, amazing drummer. You know, very well-respected. Right. Maybe not, not a household name or anything, but very well-respected. Uh, and so she's for me secrecy. And one of the reasons I knew this is because I actually asked her along for a couple secret friends tours, ostensibly to play drums, but also knowing that she's a shredder guitar player. Like, okay. uh, like Evan Rowe from Babel State, he's done the same thing. He's played drums and he's played guitar. Like I just, we work so well together. I, I was like, Oh wow. I want, you know, let's, let's, would you be into doing this? Yeah, for sure. But she had to, 
she had to drop out the last second. Okay. Uh, and that's how, when I first knew, okay, something's up. So fast forward, it was worse than I thought. And one day before my birthday in December of 2019 is when I got the news that she had passed on. And it was heavy to not to put too fine a point on it. So after the shock subsides, Dave Pao and Vern Rumsey and I kind of get together and we're like, okay, we need to finish this, this. We need to finish this thing. Like this is literally the last thing she recorded. And I was pissed at myself for not pushing as much as I probably should have. Cause I just didn't feel comfortable uh-huh. pushing. Cause it's not my deal. It's not a Kona neutron enterprise. Right. And I just didn't feel comfortable doing that. What I didn't realize is the other guys were kind of waiting for me to like to do that. I'm like, so oh, they were okay, expecting well. you to step in and be like, <laughs> <laughs> which is like, yeah, okay. And and I guess they just assumed I was going to. It was like, no, I thought like, you know, somebody should have said something. I would have anyway. Uh, it became all the more important for us to finish the record. So the songs that Lauren was going to sing, I tracked with Shane at Howell Street. Uh, luckily, I, I had kind of worked with her for the lyrics on some of them and kind of knew where it was going. And I prefer, I would have preferred if she had done the vocals, of course, because that was actually one of my things from the outset. I was like, well, I'm cool with whatever, but for songs for the vocals, I don't want to sing. Right. Because I don't want to be seen as a Kona Neutron thing. Cause I feel like I've got people that know, not that, you know, whatever, like the third most famous person by like a pretty large margin in this thing. But the, I, I didn't want it to be seen as a Kona Neutron thing. Right, right. Flat right. out. Like, I thought it was too important for me to, for it to be seen as anything other than what it was. Now, what ended up happening is, like, every song with vocals, except for, like, one, which is minimal, I end up singing. Which is like, god damn it. But uh, that's, that's only because Lauren never got the chance to track hers. Right, so right. I tracked her vocals as best as I could in my voice. Uh, which at least at, at bare minimum, those were the songs that we had worked on. We'd written the lyrics together and et cetera, et cetera. So anyway, we finished, we finished those, uh, other stuff that was outstanding, got finished up. Uh, it was mixed by, uh, Steve Fisk, who does a lot of the unwound stuff, Jay Robbins from Jawbox and, uh, Scott Evans from Kellen Wild City. I and mean, everybody just was this incredibly is like a goddamn super group. Yeah, it's, it's like a name dropper's paradise. I it, 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 all, all, you need now, all you need now is a VH1 reality show about it. Right? So everybody was incredibly giving of their time, uh, knowing full well that not only is this nobody's main thing, but, you know, there's no there's no budget for, like, anything, right? So it gets, it gets mixed, it uh, gets mastered, and then with May 1st being the COVID-19 release day, uh, for Bandcamp, they waive all their fees, so you make a whole bunch more money than you normally would because they don't take their share. And they do this uh, for for bands. And, and Secret Friends did very well on the first one, and the first one was very shortly after the quarantine started, and, and was very helpful more to us. In like June and July too. Yeah, they're going to do two more. Yeah, and so it was very good for us. We lost a lot of money. More than I feel comfortable with, anyway, with canceling the tour dates. Right, right. Um, so it was, it was, it was great because that effectively, at bare minimum, put us back at zero, <laughs> which right. is, which is huge. And so what we decided is, is I work best with a deadline. So I, I said, to those guys, I'm like, hey, can we just get this done by May first? It's a good date. We, it's a good date. What can I say? Right. Yeah. <laughs> so we. We, uh, I know you're a fan. I'm and a huge so fan. we, so we did, we, we got it done and we released it to the world and knowing full well that this is not going to have like a PR team behind it. This right. is not going to be, you know, some, it's, it's, it's all word of mouth. It's a weird, just a weird, cool thing that exists. Uh, and I guess what I'm leaving out here is that the song that we wanted to be the first one, which is actually the last song of the record, which is called Rest in Power, was meant as an elegy and celebration of dead friends, compatriots, and collaborators. Right. It, it, it's literally about Lauren. And we cut up 
some interview stuff that she did that just was like really kind of cool quotes that showed who she was Mm -hmm. and gave you a taste of like her personality. And we did that instead of uh, having like a vocal track on there. And and I, I was, and for me, I was like so deep in it. I'm like, well, I think this is great. But I have no idea. And so like, I sent it to her brother and I was like, hey, is this too much? And he, he was like, it's amazing. I'm like, okay, good. I, I listened to it. It's fantastic. I w- it's, it's something I wasn't expecting. Um, and it, it's in a completely good way. You know what I mean? I don't, when I listen to m- new music, I don't want to know what I'm going to be getting into unless it's a band like, say, Bad Religion or something. Where, <laughs> and you know right. what you're going to get, you know? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And if, for people who want to hear this early before the record comes out, it's householdgods.bandcamp.com. Right, uh, and, and there's a householdgods.com too, but it, it's basically just redirects you to the band camp, and there's some pictures. There's, there's not much there, and I wouldn't expect there to be much. And, and it's escaping me right now. But when does the, the record actually come out? Come out. Uh, right now, it's set to come out on the next band camp COVID uh, relief day, which is June. I should have this in front of me. June something. Uh, it's twelfth. June twelfth. Yeah, I think so. I'm going to go ahead and tell you that it's going to be done when the master's done. Like when the master's done, we're probably just going to push the button on and, and let it go. And one of the reasons why is because there's been a good response to it. People have been really into it and they, and they want to hear more. I would want to hear more too. Right, right. And we don't see like there's any reason to, like, to wait necessarily. We waited long enough as it is. Uh, and I think that the thing that the thing that's the biggest bummer to me, the thing I feel personally culpable for is that. I wanted people to realize how badass LKN was. And I think people in Portland knew, like Port- the Portland music community knew, and, you know, nerds like me knew. Uh, and people that, you know, if anyone ever played with her, they would know. I mean, she, like, filled in for Damon Shea in Bellini, which if anyone that knows Damon Shea's playing style knows that that's it's a pretty big deal. Uh that's like some. That's and, like when, uh, like when uh, they needed somebody to fill in for Lars because he got sick in Metallica. It's like, what right. are you gonna get? Oh, let's just grab the guy from Slipknot. <laughs> it's, it's sure. Uh, so I'm not trying to the, compare them either of them to those two butt jerkies, but you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So I mean, like Damon Chase, like you know, he's the the Bill Bruford of like indie rock, post rock, or whatever. Like he, he's known. He's a very Skilled dude. Anyway, so she deserves her day in the sun. Right. And it, it's 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 a bummer to me that we didn't get it done while she was still around. Obviously, nobody expected it. And I, I'm not like haranguing myself about it or anything, but it would have been would have been cool if we could have got it out when she was around. But that said, what I love is that people are going to be able to discover what a badass she is on this record and this cool thing that we all made together. And then hopefully maybe they can, you know, find some of her music uh, in memoriam and, well, that's good. And, uh, that's, that's what's do that. important, right? Is it's, it's, uh, um, I guess you're, I guess it's, it was, uh, I forgot who said it, but, um, they said that the best, no, what was it? I'm trying to remember is like when you're dead, you're dead, but you're not so dead if you've contributed something. And right. she's contributed a lot, so. Well, totally. And, again, the response from the people that knew her best, uh, including friends, like immediate family, et cetera, et cetera, has been, has been wonderful. And that, that was the thing, only thing I was worried about is, like, I was like, I want to make sure it's not, like, too heavy-handed or whatever. Um, and, and, you know, and it's, it's also, it's an interesting record, it doesn't all sound just like that. Like there's a couple more conventional rock songs. Like there's one where again, to me, it sounds like the cars or something. Uh, but what's everyone else going to hear? I don't know. But like Lauren and Dave Pajo like trade guitar solos and it's freaking awesome. And I love it. And there's another song that's kind of driven by her guitar stuff where I play organ on, not my primary instrument. And, uh, just a heads up. That's real special. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Just just so everyone knows, the, the perfunctory organ skills of Coda Neutron are available on the Household of Gods record. Uh, the, the was it the the functional bass plane? What was the uh, the Simpsons quote? The, the, no, it was a bong rattling, the bong rattling bass plane 
of uh, Mark Farner, uh, Grand Funk, uh, whatever. Anyway, I know what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. It's a great reference. Anyway, uh, yeah. So that that's that's household gods record, and that's that's something that we've largely kept the lid on for, I guess, about a year, a year, almost a year and a half. That's crazy. That's crazy. We're going to take a real quick break. We're going to come back with more from Conan Neutron in just a minute. Are you a horror fan? Do you like wearing your fandom on your shirt and showing the entire world? Then head over to FrightRags.com and get all sorts of cool memorabilia and t-shirts to show the world that you are a true horror fan. From enamel pins to collectible cards, socks, and t-shirts with your favorite horror icons on them. Head over to FrightRags.com and when checking out, use promo code per T10. That's P as in Peter. You are T-E-E-10 and save 10% on your order today. Hey everybody, we're back here on the Romper T Show. Uh, with me still is Conan Neutron of Conan Neutron and the Secret Friends and yes. Household Gods. There he is. See, he's he's right next to me. I could poke him. <laughs> I could poke him. Uh, you got a new record coming out, and uh, but you haven't really said when, have you? Well, yeah. I mean, that's and this is a Secret so that's Friends question, record. Right? This is something else that we're talking about. Yeah. Now. So this is this is my primary band, Conan Neutron, the Secret Friends, only band, really. Um, the it, this is going to be the well, technically speaking, the third record, but that's not counting protons and electrons as a record because that's a series of singles. Right. So if if you count that as a record, this will be the fourth one. But third actual record, when's it coming out? Well, <laughs> it's that. That's a good question. That's the math on that has changed considerably with this quarantine stuff. Um. I guess there's no reason it can't just come out whenever. Is it done? Uh, we, it's done. It's it's in the mastering phases. Uh, I haven't put a whole lot of effort into it. It'll be sometime. It'll probably be sometime this this year. What I would say is more than likely, like late summer, early fall. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm kind of torn on it because I almost. I w- what I would love to do is be able to tie it in with some larger touring and stuff like that. But nobody's touring right now. Well, have you ever thought to, to do what a lot of people are doing and stream live shows and, and kind of like, I guess it's just for tips. It's like playing on the street, you know, but. Yeah, I, you know, I, I get it. And I get that, like what people, uh, what people get out of it. It's not really the way I like to present the band. So fair for enough. me, the recordings are, are a bit, I, and, and to be fair, I think, you know, there's a Kraken live show yes. with Secret Friends uh, but I, there was supposed to be one on May 1st, but, uh, right. <laughs> God damn virus right after the shows with Archer of loaf. Yeah. The, so it's, it's, it's tough. It's tough because I like that what bands are doing with it, but it's not the way I want to present the music. That's, no, that's, that's fair. probably the best way I can put it. And, and at some point we're going to be a live band again. The nice thing about Cone Neutron, the secret friends, which, Ultimately, it, it, that is my songs. Like I, I write the songs, I arrange everything, and then Tony and Dale uh, record the records, record on the records, and that's what becomes Conan Neutron, the Secret Friends. And then live, it's always me, it's always Tony, and you never quite know who was, who's going to be playing with us, but they're always going to be awesome. So the nice thing about it is the band can kind of go up on the shelf without much worry. Right. Like, it can come down anytime. Uh, there's, I don't have to... Check in with anyone's feelings. Or, or How are you or doing today, sweetheart? Yeah, yeah. I mean, not that. Oh, that sounds terrible to me. But I think that. <laughs> well, it's a band. It's for sure a band. But it's a band that doesn't operate in the ways that have been impediments to me in the past. And what I found is that it's the one that is connected with people the most. Not just because there's a famous guy on it, but because it's the most true representation of what i do musically right and does it for everyone no but it's 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 found an audience and that's that's great so we'll we'll do stuff when it's it's, when there's going to be stuff that's happening but as far as conan neutron the secret friends you will not see a conan neutron the secret friends live stream anytime soon if we did i would i would do it totally stupid like i would do like a big production of it. Well, that's, <laughs> like the, you con- and that's what you and a I. A concert film. Yeah, you and I have a lot in common in regards to like entertainment because we're showmen, and right. and that's like it almost seems to be at the forefront of everything. 
it's putting on a, a show for people. You know what I mean? Entertaining. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and there's, I mean, and like there's folks like Chris Williams from Plastic Flame and Maple Stave and The Operative and who does many, many things. Uh, he's been doing this thing where he's just playing guitar, like guitar with songs he likes. That's great. And I love it. Uh, it's not me. Right. No, normally, that makes which sense. is funny because I'm, I'm going to do that at the end of the show. But it's not really. Yeah, but that's a little different. Yeah, yeah. It, it's not my comfort level, and it's not how it's not how I want that band represented. And I feel like I should apologize for it, but I don't. It, it, it's how you you. I mean, like you know, like we were just talking about. I, I mean, the sound of the band isn't translated as well on acoustic guitar. The songs are, but the the right. like the aura and the entity of the band need to have like like this big bombastic stage show uh, with you in a a, a sequent jacket and a bolo <laughs> tie doing your best job. Right. Bob. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, there's a certain, there's a certain way I want the music to be presented, and I don't have the capabilities and budget to be able to do that in a live streaming environment, nor would I say is there probably interest necessarily in it. Maybe there is, I don't know, but what I've come to the conclusion of is that Conan Neutron and the Secret Friends as a live band will exist again when people can be in a room together. Fair enough. Uh, and then until then, it will exist only as an idea and as many recordings that people can certainly listen to on your format of choice. Well, sometimes ideas can be the most dangerous thing. Right. And, and it's for me, it's not a big freaking deal at all right, because right. it's this is how the band always is. Like it, it both exists as a live entity and it exists as records. And. They're not exactly the same, but there's a through line through all of it, and it all comes to the fact that, like, yeah, it's it's weird ass music, but it's a big show, right? Exactly. Right? Like, it, it's a big show, but it's informed by punk rock, and that's never really changed. This is like this the most pure manifestation of it. Makes Maybe, sense. If that makes sense. Makes sense. So I'm not going to compromise that, and and you should. It also just means that it's not it's not in that way. It's not built for these times. Right. What right. I will say, you probably might see. Is there might be like an EP or two that comes out because of this time? Like <laughs> like uh, the, the, the times influencing your songwriting type of thing? Well, and also just the fact that there's the ability to do it. Uh, there's going to be more recorded material, probably. Probably. I shouldn't promise anything beyond the record that's ar- literally already tracked. Right. And like that's been like ready to go for about, you know, six, seven months or something along those lines. So Only six or seven, unlike other records where it's a year and a half. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's compared to the House of Gods record, it's that's a that's a short time, and that's only because because we took a really long. I was, I was being a little more persnickety about the mixes than I am normally, and that's the only reason why. Fair enough. Now let's let's talk about persnickety for a second because post <laughs> Conan Neutron's Protonic Reversal, and I was always told when I was first starting out in this field is you pick a day and you stick with it to release things so people can get consistency <laughs> because people are are ultimately babies and they need to have consistency. Um, <laughs> you have been putting out episodes of Protonic Reversal faster than I can keep track. Are you going to go back to a set time, or is it just going to be like, follow me on social because the show's coming at you? That's a very, that's a very good question, and it's a very hard one to question. answer. Well, so, and to, to to give a little more context to it. What I've been doing for the past month is what I call stay-at-home editions that are literally designed to keep people at home but entertained. Right. And what I realized is, is since all touring was, was pretty much off the table and canceled, not working, I have nothing but time. But by the same token, everybody's home, right. too. So I started thinking about what the idea of the show was. And the idea of the show isn't that it's a weekly show. The idea of the show is that it's in-depth discussions with people that aren't necessarily household names, and it comes out from a perspective of someone who also creates and lives that life. And that's where the strength of the show is. So it started off just being, I think I did two episodes one week, and then I did like three the next, and then I did seven. I think just the other day you did two in one day. Yeah, and what I found is that like, I know how to do the show. Right. And 
the, the only good thing, and there's no good thing about this pandemic, is that everybody's home. This is true. So there's been like six months of shows that I've basically done in the last month. And is it, can people expect it to be like every day? So no, I wouldn't say that. But it's going to be as much as I feel comfortable with. And what I found is interesting is that the audience has grown with it. Meaning that there's been a lot of new listeners that have come in that just weren't familiar with the show before, or in some cases didn't have time before or didn't, you right. know, didn't feel the desire to, to check it out necessarily. And they've gone through and found the archives and that's great. So the show, it has a voice, it has a voice, it has an ethos. And I don't necessarily, I've, I've had people tell me that they feel that the shows lately have been more deeper and poignant Right. Which isn't to say that it, it lacked depth and poignancy before, but just that there's it's kind of like leveled up, right? Right. I don't know. I can't speak to any of that. I do know that, like, I know when there's a good episode and when there's a mediocre episode. Luckily, it's been a really long time since it's been a mediocre episode, but that's important. I'm in the same yeah. boat. I'm 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 waiting. I'm waiting for that dud. Yeah, like if that if that happens. I'll probably slow down. Don't worry about it. But as it stands right now, uh, it's the show's doing good and it, it's, it's doing good for people, which is more important, which is to say that, look, I've had people like message me from like Germany, from South America that are just bouncing off the walls in their house and listening to me, you know, chop it up with like Jerry from Devo or Mark Lanigan or whoever is something that like makes their day a little brighter. And that's not why I necessarily have done it. The whole point of me doing Protonic Reversal was to give me something that I was good at. They could add to the conversation that was between me making records and touring, knowing I can't do that all the time. Right. And it's been cool. It, it, it seems like, you know, the quarantine's bad. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I mean, the, well, the, the virus is bad. But the, the quarantine, quarantine... is good, people of Michigan. The quarantine is good. Yeah, I, I gotta be careful about my, my words here. But... I don't. The, uh... The, uh... The big thing right now is that people have a lot more time in their hands than they are used to. And what's that late has laid bare is the fact that most people's schedule revolves around things like going to work, going to a place, going to do a thing. Right, right, you know, right. here's here's our day that we go to the bar and go hang out, et cetera, et cetera. And that's gone. And some people have filled it up with like Zoom meetings and stuff like that. Okay, okay, fine. But the fact that there's a bunch of people that have opened up their time and their lives to basically be a fly on the wall for these conversations has been really cool. And it's been something that I don't take it lightly at all. Right. right. And I don't think the show is that much different necessarily. No, it's not. It's just, that <laughs> it's just that it's hitting folks a little harder. And I mean, am I going to keep a regular schedule at some point? I would imagine it's going to go back to a regular schedule mm -hmm. uh, right now. Just fo yeah, follow me on, Twitter, Instagram, follow the show on Facebook and strap in because they're happening all the damn time. I try to give a little advance notice, but I don't know. I can only do so much. And then you can listen to the pop-up shop that is radio broadcasts uh, called Conan Neutron's Protonic Reversal. Yeah, exactly. It's like an, it's like an Etsy store. It, it, kind of. <laughs> a little bit. I mean, our local record shop Single here, source. Yeah, our, our, our local record shop here would do pop-up shops at area bars until they were able to get their sh proper shop open. And uh, that was okay. Sure, that works. So uh, real quick before we take a break and you come back and mm -hmm. uh, make our ears bleed with your awesome rock and roll uh, on the right. acoustic guitar. Um, it's, yeah, that's like telling Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young to uh, crank it up to 11. Um, I, was gonna say, yeah, I, I don't know so this, if ears are going to bleed. That may not be a desirable outcome. Yeah, maybe, but... know, maybe I shouldn't have said bleed. Uh, implode with joy. We'll there implode you go. With joy. That's the stuff. Uh, real quick, you're going to be appearing next for people to see you live somewhere, actually. And that's May 16th 
at this YouTube channel for Virtual Blank Fest. Let me explain Virtual Blank Fest a little bit here. Uh, basically, every year here in Wisconsin, <coughs> Racine, Wisconsin to be exact, we do a homeless benefit. And all the proceeds go to the homeless shelters. So what we are doing this time is we're doing everything digitally, which means we're able to get artists in that we couldn't get before. Uh, and it's going to be one hell of a show. Uh, it's May 16th. Watch my socials, Real Run for T, uh, for any kind of updates in regards to time. But it is May 16th, but it keeps growing. People keep wanting to be a part of it. And I have this horrible problem with saying no. But Conan's going to be a part of it. And uh, Tim from Silkworm, um, Dave Arcari. Chris yeah, fantastic. Yeah. So Tim's Tim's solo stuff is is actually really really fun. Yeah, it cool. is. Uh, who else? Uh, and the and the headliner, uh, maybe you've heard of him, folks. William Elliot Whitmore. He was on. He was Ooh. actually my first guest ever on this show back in I don't know a long time ago before my knees started to ache. Um, but uh, it's going to be a lot of fun now. Uh, I have to thank you here publicly though because you uh, were instrumental in helping me set up some of this stuff. Oh yeah, well I'm happy to help. It's uh, as I said, as I said in the past, you know, it's, it's a very important cause, and it's something that is near and dear to my heart. So anything I can do to help, for sure, I will. I mean, flat out, I one of the years the band played it instead of me going to see the Jesus Lizard because I we'd already committed that. to doing it. So I remember that, <laughs> and then the whole night I'm like, God damn, Jesus Lizard. Uh, yeah. I figured First of all, how dare you, Jesus Lizard? Yeah, I want, no, I'm not bad shit mouthing mouth the Jesus. I love the Jesus Lizard, but it's. Uh, it definitely it cut into attendance a little bit, but a I, little. I mean, it's. Well, you know. Everyone went to worship in Chicago. <laughs> For Christ's sake, that was horrible. At, at the altar of Yao, yeah. Exactly, exactly. So uh, we're going to take another real quick break, and then Cohen's going to come back. He's going to play a song for everybody. Uh, one that you might you might hear at Blank Fest, but now you'll get to see what you're in for when you come. And another thing about Blank Fest is, is it's all donations. You can watch the stream for free. If you're hurting yourself, we're not asking you to give if you don't have anything. Um, right. But there's something to take your mind off of stuff to enjoy. So uh, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back, and Kona Neutron will be performing. We'll see you in a second. This episode of the Ron Partee Show is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com forward slash Ron Show. Over 150,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. So head over to audibletrial.com forward slash Ron Show today. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the program. Performing his song, Paved Age, which has a kind of a weird place in my heart for some reason i'm not exactly sure perhaps it's <laughs> rotting perhaps it's rotting worms and the destruction of all of humanity here's conan neutron with paved age are you ready conan let's do it Do you remember those times when things move so slow? At the pace of a glacier, that's how things would go. Took those gummy trains and we shut them down. A thousand highway stars, now can you hear the sound? We live, we live in a paved age Asphalt dreams and concrete days We live, we live in a paved age Asphalt dreams and concrete days Days like this The 
This is what we do when we're really quite fond of it. So let's celebrate now before it turns into a monument. These civilized times, these modern marvels of woe. You like to stay, but you should probably go. We live, we live in the paid age. The asphalt dreams and concrete days. We live, we live in the paid age. Asphalt dreams and concrete days. Thank you so much for being on Conan. Uh, if you want more Conan Neutron, head over to ronhasawebsite.com. There's going to be an exclusive performance over there. If you want to know what it is, you have to head over there because I ain't saying a goddamn thing. Uh, <laughs> you can find the uh, Household Gods on Bandcamp at householdgods.bandcamp.com. It's uh, Secret Friends at bandcamp.com. Right? Neutron Friends. Neutron Friends. Yeah. Neutron Friends. See, I don't remember things. I just go. I just, I'm just there. It's fine. You're busy. I'm you have busy. people for that. I, I do. I, well, I do have <laughs> I do have people for that now. But I want to thank everybody for tuning in. I want to thank Conan for being here. He's been a real trooper and a sport. And uh, we will see you next time. And just remember, just because you don't like your family doesn't mean you can't love them. We'll see you next time, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>